I'm Paul Snow, one of the athletic directors at Menlo Atherton. Uh, Steve Krieger is the other one. He'll be joining us shortly. And uh, we want to welcome you guys to our info night for parents and really uh, congratulate you on your kids making a team, which isn't easy by any means. We have a lot of athletes at MA. Um, athletics is a huge, huge thing, uh, important part of the aspect and culture of our school. Um, so we're, we're lucky to have a positive coaching alliance here joining with, with us today and two of their trainers, not just one, two. Um, so I wanted to give them a brief welcome and a uh, well, virtual welcome. Everybody's clapping just wildly right now for them. Um, so I wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction for each, and then they're going to talk for about 30 minutes, and then we're going to uh, wrap it up with about 30 minutes from Nick Muse, who is our AVP, Assistant uh, Vice Principal, that oversees athletics. It's who we as athletic directors meet with directly every week. And we have Janelle McCombs on the call as well, who is our Boosters president. So that is us. Let me get to uh, my screen to introduce our trainers from the Positive Coaching Alliance. If you hear me say PCA, I'm going to be full of acronyms probably today, but I'll try to spell them out also, a PCA is a, is a group that we've been working with for many years and uh, lucky to partner with them. They're an amazing organization, stands for Positive Coaching Alliance. Uh, today, we're joined by Mark Smidgen. Uh, he's an author, a coach, former collegiate water polo goalie um, out of Cal Poly, San Obispo, where I actually hail from. And I was joking with Mark when, we, when I just met him that uh, we went in opposite directions because I'm from San Luis Obispo area and I uh, went to college at Davis and he's from Davis, went to Davis high school, played water polo there, and then went South to Cal Poly to, to continue his collegiate water polo, uh, playing time. So Mark is here, uh, California native swam and played water polo at Davis high school. As I said, played collegiate at Cal Poly after 18 years in engineering, Mark began his second career as a children's book author and a humor columnist. He got a chance to be a baseball and softball umpire in high school. In college and after his kids were born, Mark was blessed to be able to coach them in youth baseball with the Rockland Pony Organization for 11 years, uh, Rockland Lacrosse four years, and two years at the high school level with Whitney High School uh, water polo. He coached his last game in 2022 and is now a full-time fan, which he's going to talk to you guys about, uh, as well as a part-time high school lacrosse PA announcer. He's very passionate about keeping youth sports focused on what's most important, and that's teaching young people the skills and mindset to learn from their failures and create their own successes in and out of sports. All right, so that is Mark. And then we also, I'm so, yeah, that was Mark. And now we have Cletus Coffey, uh, also from California, grew up in Santa Rosa, but now lives in Seattle. He's a former professional athlete and world champion athlete at that. After playing football in the CFL and arena football leagues, Cletus won a master track and field world championship for Team USA. He's coached football and track and field on all levels and has trained high performance athletes for over 20 years. He currently uses his experience as an athlete, coach, and entrepreneur to help leaders, athletes, and former athletes reach their highest potential both on and off the field. So I'd like to welcome them and they can share their screen. Cletus, take it away, man. Let's do this. Amazing intro, Paul. I, I couldn't have written that better myself. <laughs> uh, brilliant. So, hey, uh, Menlo Atherton, great to be here. Great to be back uh, virtually in the Bay Area. And I, I'll tell you, let's just get right to it because we got a, we got a short amount of time together, but it's a powerful one. And I want you to know that, yes, I, I am a high school track and field coach. I'm also a parent. I have two high schoolers now, uh, one at the uh, a senior and a freshman. And so I'm in your seat as well. We just had our, in fact, last week, we had our back to school night or info night uh, with the athletic department. And so I was in your seat and I wish I had someone like me at our, at our event. So I'm glad I get to, to at least embark and share with some insight on what we call our second goal parent conversation. And by second goal parent, we simply mean this, the coaches of your program, we call them double goal coaches. They have two goals. The coaches at Menlo Atherton have two goals. One is to compete to win, and the other is to teach life lessons at the same time. It's not either or. Now, you all come in. We all come in as parents 
on the second goal. And what you're going to hear through all this is, is our job is simply to help them absorb the life lessons. Because I'm willing to bet that many of you through sport, uh, if you didn't do sport, maybe it was theater or music, or maybe just through school, have, have a memory uh, about your experience that has still stayed with you all these years. What is it? What, let's do a quick little refreshment, parents. What is that one word that comes to mind when you think about your youth or high school sports experience, activities, school? What, what is that, that one word? And I believe we have the ability to use the Q&A uh, group. So you'll notice on your Zoom dashboard there, you have a Q&A. If you want to just toss into the Q&A what that one word is, that would be helpful. That way I can see uh, what you are reflecting on. So again, use the Q&A on your Zoom tab. And what's that, what's that one word that comes to mind when you think about your youth or high school experiences? Michelle, the first one in. I appreciate it. Thank you. Supportive. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Lexi got in with camaraderie. Camaraderie. Yeah. Yes. In the chat. Oh, thank you, Lexi. Yes, camaraderie, supportive. Uh, anybody else? What else? Well, I can tell you that uh, camaraderie, being supportive, is amazing. And at the same time, I'm willing to bet if we had enough time together, we can uncover that there was probably some experiences that you still remember today that you're probably like, ah, oh, that wasn't the best, the best experience. And it could have been something that uh, you found from your coaches or maybe from your parents. Uh, and, you know, that's something that when we look back on our experience, we have to be mindful of preparing for our child's experience. So when you think about your child's experience, I want you to reflect on a word that would describe your child's experience. So if they're freshmen, they're probably just embarking on their journey. Uh, if you've been here and this is not uh, your first go around, what reflect on that. What, what's that one word that comes up for you when you think about your child's experience? And if you're inclined to, to lob that into the chat or, or to the Q&A, that, that would be amazing. Thinking about your child's experience. Or if you just want to internally reflect, uh, that would be great. Well, here's what I would encourage you to do. Pride. Is we got pride, pride. from Rafaela. Rafaela, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. What are your goals, parents? You, your, your athletes may or may not or will be developing goals for this season or for this year. What are your goals? And it's it's this is the, the self-awareness a piece where we get to get clear on what are our goals for our child. So we listed out some, some common goals here. Just take a quick, quick look over these and maybe pick two or three of them that you would think that, okay, yeah, I, I could buy in on this being, a, you know, your goal. This is a parent's goal for your child this year <clears throat> from winning to being a better athlete, developing self-confidence, earning a scholarship, Think about that. And again, if I'd love to go to the chat, this is this is an interactive experience, as you, as you probably can tell. So if uh, if you wouldn't be so kind just to throw one or two of those into the chat or the Q&A, that would be helpful. What are your goals? We'd love to we'd love to get a sense what of this list here or maybe others. And while you're thinking about that, I, I want to make sure I point out that there's a really good chance that your goal for your child this year is different than theirs. They may be like, hey, mom, dad, guardian, like, I just want to be with my friends. I just want to go have fun. And it's important for you to be clear on what your goals are and inquire about their goals so that this is their experience. And they're saying, hey, I just want to have fun, hang out with my friends. And you're like, scholarship, scholarship, scholarship. There's going to be a disconnection. And so it's important that we are clear on our goals and get clear on those on, on our child's goals so that we can uh, you know, govern ourselves a bit and make sure we make this about, about their, their experience. The other element that it does, I'm going to teach you all how to cheer for your, for your, your child. What do you think? You're going to come to information night and, and learn how to cheer. Hey, Cletus, this is, this is old hat for me. I've been doing this for years. I, I'm willing to bet that you have. But I'm going to encourage you, parents, to be mindful of 
cheering, and we call it targeted cheering, cheering towards your goals and or your child's goals for the season. What that means is it's very common that we just start cheering when someone makes a good play. Someone gets a hit, someone scores a basket, hits a, someone scores a goal, uh, has a great race. We oftentimes uh, cheer for the good plays. Well, if you're like, hey, I'm all about my child learning self-confidence this year or learning teamwork, cheer for that. So if you see your child exhibiting good teamwork out there, get all fired up for it. Express the joy. Let them see you recognizing their teamwork or their, their confidence or how maybe they bounced back and showed some resiliency. They struck out at the plate and they ran back to the dugout, fired up, ready to get out, hustled out to center field. Like, get excited about that and, and, and recognize them for it. You know, essentially, you know, direct your cheering towards what it is that you want um, for them this year. So as we said, teaching life lessons and striving to win. Parents, as parents, we're in the backdrop of this drama called high school sports. The main characters, the athletic department, the coaches, the athletes, we are in the backdrop. And it's not our role to insert ourselves into the, into the main role because our job is simply to help them absorb the life lessons. At PCA, if, if you're unfamiliar with PCA, we've got three core principles. Elm Tree of Mastery, which focuses on effort over outcomes. Filling emotional tanks, which is delivering feedback in a way that can help change behavior and performance. And then lastly, honoring and respecting the game. These are the three key principles that we exhibit through all of our content, and especially with positive sports parenting. Now, in, in the lieu of time, I'm just going to play about 30 seconds of this, but uh, it just gives you a sense. We ask kids to tell us how they felt. Listen in. I prefer that my parents, if I play bad, don't say anything. And if I play well, it doesn't really matter if they compliment me on how I play. I just like, I don't know, I prefer my parents to, I don't not talk as much. <laughs> I can hear them like cheering me on and I'm like thinking in my head, just shut it, I'm trying to focus. My mom yells in Spanish. Like, go, go, go! My mom just says, use the backboard, you should use the backboard. I get angry because it, it annoys me. I'm kind of embarrassed. She tells me to get in the position that my coach told me not to get in. I'm like, well, no. And then she's like, get in your position. I'm like, no. I don't like it when uh, they try to push me even more, even though I'm trying really, really hard. You kind of get the gist of it, right? They're, they're saying, hey, let us do our thing <laughs> and support us in, in that regard. And it's really important that we uh, be mindful of, again, this is their experience. How can we support them and get them to, to obviously look back on their experience and say, gosh, that was an amazing high school experience. As I mentioned, uh, targeted cheering. We want to avoid parents in our cheering. Number one, we're going to be positive. Anything, any qualms or feedback you have about, about what plays are being called or who's who's playing and who's not playing. And, you know, that's that's for the coaches to decide. That's that's we are entrusting coaches to be able to make those decisions. Our cheering needs to be, again, towards the things that are important to us versus directions. So instead of cheering, pass the ball, run faster, get your hands up. Those are giving our children directions. They need to hear directions from their coaches not from us, during the flow of the game and so forth. So instead of giving them directions, we want to uh, give them non-directional cheering. So we want to support the effort that we're seeing out there. Good play, awesome defense, great pass versus giving directions. Okay? A couple of other examples, nice effort, good hustle, terrific shot, uh, you know, super teamwork. And again, they, they seem very general, but that's the key. We want to be able just to support them, their effort and help them recognize and seize some of those some of those um, life lessons that that uh, flourish through sports. The other thing that's important, parents, is that you establish a partnership with your child's coach. This is imperative. Normally, coaches don't hear from parents unless something's going wrong. Okay, 
So let's let's make a positive initial reach out if you have the opportunity to meet a coach in person. Connect the face to a name. I'm so and so's parent. Uh, you know, obviously shake their hand or whatever it may be, just to connect with them. Or if you can do it virtually or online or via email, but make positive early contact with the coach. Remember, they are they have your child's best interest when they're under their care. So we want to make sure we are uh, making sure we are uh, developing a, a strong partnership with them. Filling the coach's emotional tank, I think, is a very very powerful way to support the coach. Again. Coaches don't normally hear from parents unless something's going wrong. If a coach does something that that you liked, was a good effort, that was supportive, recognize them. It's called filling their emotional tank. Give them a, a, a compliment, something that makes them feel good. Hey, coach, I know we lost, but gosh, I really loved how you were supportive out there. I really helped, loved your energy out there. Hey, coach, you know, way to way to hustle, you know, get everyone hustling hard today. Whatever it may be, recognize them. That goes so far. As a high school coach, I love being recognized by my parents. It makes me feel like, okay, I'm, I have a purpose and meaning behind this. They know that I'm doing what's, I have their child's best interest at heart uh, and that we're off doing some good things. So fill their emotional tank. Please observe a cooling off period, parents. If it's a particular game, your coaches may have individual rules like, hey, 48 hour rule. We're not going to talk about the game or anything for 48 hours. I know oftentimes football teams that plan Friday nights don't want to discuss till Monday. It's a cooling off period. If you didn't like your child's playing time or how they're being used or where the coach uh, worked the game, uh, you know, plays they were calling, et cetera, please do not approach them before the game. Do not approach them after the game. Observe a cooling off period. And then you can reach out and engage if it's something that um, you want to have a conversation with them about. Uh, obviously, no one in intervention is needed. So I'm, I'm saying let the coaches do their thing. Let, let them uh, handle the care of your child. However, ultimately, you are responsible. This is your child. And you know when there's a need to intervene. You know when something may not sound right or look right. And please don't use that as an, as, as an example to say, well, you know, the coaches are doing their thing. If you see or smell or feel something's off, it's okay to step in and say, uh, I, I need to know more about what's going on. That's intervention. Uh, and you are totally at your right to do that. Uh, lastly, a few, the few pieces here, uh, let the coach coach, please let the coach do their, do their job. Uh, there's not that many zeros that show up on their, on their paychecks. I can tell you as a coach. So please have some, some grace and some understanding that they're doing their best and you know they want to do what's best for your child. Please don't put your child in the middle. Uh, you know, that situation where maybe you didn't like playing time and, well, you need to go tell coach to do this or, you know, relaying messages from what you think to through your child to the coach, please don't do that. It, it's, it only makes the child in a very uncomfortable situation. And now, especially when they really like their coach, there, there's some confusion and those wheels as athletes, they're already spinning in our head, the less stress and, and wheels that spin, the better. Lastly, let your child self advocate. This is a life lesson that they need for the rest of their lives. So if they don't like their playing time, well, go talk to coach. They didn't like what, what plays were run. Go talk to coach. They didn't like they don't, what they're doing in training. Encourage them to go talk to coach and have that conversation with them. It'll teach them. It, it, it's a muscle that they can learn that they're going to have to use for future employers, future relationships, being a self advocate for themselves. So that's the coach parent partnership. I'm going to kick it over to my partner, Mr. Mark. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, uh, that is one amazing thing that children get out of sports that we don't think about a lot, which is that self-advocating uh, process. And um, you know very well that when they graduate college and go get their first job, you don't get to show up uh, in the boss's office and say, hey, my kid needs a bigger cubicle and a window. Uh, right. That's on them. And um, this is the this is the vehicle that we get to use to help them learn that. So uh, you are the coach in the living room uh, during the role play, and uh, you get to help them figure out how they're going to go ask for more playing time and um, why they deserve more playing time and all that good stuff, right? Help help them that way by role playing the, uh, the scenario because it's their job uh, to go talk about it. So long time ago, 10 years ago or so, uh, a, a large survey was done asking hundreds of college students 
uh, a simple question uh, that caused them a lot of reflection. What is your worst memory from youth and high school sports? Now you have to understand that, that we're talking about college athletes got got pulled on this. Being a college athlete is a is a pretty elite thing in and of itself, right? There was a lot of high school athletes that didn't get to go play in college. So these kids have played a lot more sports than than everybody else. They've probably played hurt. They've probably been hurt and been out for half a season, a full season, right? They've gone through a lot to get to be a high school, excuse me, to get to be a college athlete. Ask them, what is your worst memory from high school and youth and high school sports? And overwhelming majority answer was the car ride home with my parents. And that's brutal. If you're a parent to think that you were the worst memory of, of all of this that went down, right? Um, and we know why. It's because of the, the post-game analysis. It's because of the... Uh, conversation that happens in that car, unfortunately, on their way home. Uh, and we've got a toolkit for you on on how to avoid when your kid gets gets to college, gets to play sports and gets asked that question. It's not their answer, right? Uh, avoid the dreaded PGA. In this case, if your kid's a golfer, by all means, strive for the PGA. That stands for post-game analysis. Avoid that at all costs. I guarantee you that the coach saw whatever happened, right? Uh, and the coach will be working on it uh, next time. If you're their coach on Saturday on the lawn. Uh, great. That's awesome. Just be on the same page with their coach. If you think they need something to work on, don't talk about it. Just ask them if they want to go do that thing, right? They don't want to. Okay. Let coach know. Coach is going to, coach is going to, I, I will will assure you that that coach will be uh, will be planning on that anyway right so avoid that pga when it comes to talking to your child about sports it is really really helpful to try to make that conversation more like two adults having coffee together and less like boss and employee right less like uh king and subject Right. You are you're in charge of them. You're the one that tells them what to do and make sure it happens. Right. But in these sports moments, when we're talking about sports and how they feel about it and what happened and all that good stuff. Try to make it a, a conversation among equals. Um, and one great way to do that is uh, instead of telling them what you think, ask them what they think and then ask three follow up questions. Right adopt that tell me more attitude and you will get a much different perspective of what they're going through because you're going to learn how they feel about it and uh, they have a different perspective than you do right they're on the field we're in the stands watching and then resisting the urge to fix it at all costs uh, right you're you don't get to you don't get to go to talk to the coach about playing time that's not your job um, help them fix it if something's wrong and like Cleta said, you, you're going to know when intervention is needed. Your your mama bear, your papa bear. If it's a safety issue, if if something doesn't smell right, there's no cooling off period. Jump in there, talk to the coach. But um, past that, uh, there there is a definite cooling off period and a definite where am I needed? And it's probably not here. It's in the living room helping them figure out how to get it done. Uh, growth mindset versus fixed mindset. We uh, this is a major principle of PCA. If you've not heard of growth mindset versus fixed mindset, it is the idea set forth uh, by Carol Dweck in her amazing book, Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. If you haven't read that, get it, read it. It'll change your life. Uh, fixed mindset is simply you got to be born with it to be good at it, right? You're either good or bad at something when you're born, right? Well, that's that's obviously not right. However, every person, you and me included, have things that we think about in a fixed mindset. We have parts of our life. Every human has parts of their life that is fixed mindset and parts that are growth. Growth mindset is simply, I can be better tomorrow than I was today in some increment. If I work harder, work smarter, try something different, all that good stuff, right? I can be better in some increment tomorrow than I was today at this thing. Uh, and that applies to all your life. You have a lot of stuff your growth mindset about, and chances are, if you sit down and think about it, those are the things that you excel at in life. The things that you avoid, 
the things that you tell yourself, I'm not good at that. Those are your fixed mindset things. If you can find those and work on those, turning those around to a growth mindset, you're going to thrive in those areas too. Best way, just simple, one word, cheap and easy way for us parents to kick our kid from fixed mindset to growth mindset is every time you hear an I can't message, my kids hear me yell this all the time. I can't shoot with my hand. You can't shoot with your left hand yet. You, I yell yet at them twice a week, right? When I hear something that they say that is a fixed mindset statement. If you can get them to put yet on the end of it, it's so silly and so simple, but it really does change your brain chemistry. Having to say the word yet after an I can't statement changes that to growth mindset and gives you an opportunity to get better at it that i can't shoot with my left hand he, that lacrosse player is dead in the water they will never shoot with their left hand i can't yet i can practice it and i can get better right so tools to honor the game tools to leave this better than we found it tools to be a thermostat instead of a thermometer. It's one of my favorite uh, sayings for coaches and parents and kids on the bench, right? Be a thermostat, not a thermometer. You need to be working hard to set the temperature, not to react to it, right? Um, I did a workshop previously tonight and we were talking to the parents about, um, they were asking for tips to help their kids get over uh, things that went wrong. And I said, I really like to talk to my athletes about not letting somebody take you out of the game. Don't you're, you're going to run into a lot of trash talkers when you play sports. Don't let that person change your game. If you're thinking about that trash talk, you are not playing your game, right? So you got to find your way to not let somebody take you out of this game. And same with us for parents as parents. If we are leaving the stadium, leaving the field with anything other than a sense of joy that we just got to watch our child compete and what a privilege that is, then we let somebody take us out of the game. We let the opponents, we let the other coach, we let the officials take us out of the game. And we need to find a self-control routine as parents to make sure that that doesn't happen. That can be whatever you want. Uh, but it is, you know, breathing, it's um, sticking a lollipop in your mouth. If you're, if you're prone to yelling, it's whatever you need to do to make sure that you focus when you are there on making sure that you are just simply loving being there and feel blessed that you get to watch your kid compete. Uh, silent if you don't agree with a call is um, easy to say, hard to do. Uh, we get wrapped up in sports uh, and we get really wrapped up in it when our kids play. Right? I have three, uh, I have one in college now and two still playing high school lacrosse. And uh, I was their coach for a while and now I'm not. I'm a fan and man, I still am feeling like their coach from the stands, right? Um, we get wrapped up in it. And um, just simply keeping your mouth shut when things aren't going, say to yourself, I am the thermostat not the thermometer. I'm not going to react to this. I'm going to set the temperature and I'm going to help the other parents around me do the same thing so that we stay classy and um, let these kids do their thing and not take them out of the game. Speaking respectfully about the opponents, about the coach, about the officials, about everybody involved is one way that you can help your child honor the game uh, because you are modeling and teaching how they're going to grow up, right? They don't listen to you. We know that. They don't listen, but man, they're watching to see how to act as an adult, right? And um, so the more we understand that we're under the microscope and uh, they're watching us, we can we can adjust our behavior accordingly. I want to leave you with this final thought of the good old days. Something comes to mind when you hear the term good old days. For me, it's not having one of these, uh, not not playing organized sports every single month of the year, right? Having um, having times in my life when we just played for fun out in the street, uh, having a street light and you weren't supposed to come on and come home until your street light came on. Uh, you know that for me that that's that's the good old days. Um, you have something that comes it, to mind when you hear that phrase. What I want to leave you with is that you are in it. You are smack dab in the middle of the good old days with your child.
being so blessed to get to go to the field, to the stadium, to the pool, to the park, and watch them compete. It will be over faster than you want it to be. Uh, my I played water polo. My oldest son played water polo. I couldn't convince either of the other two to play. Um, and they're having a ball at lacrosse. I can't complain. Uh, but um, he played high school. I got to coach him for a couple of years. I was It was amazing. I loved every second of it. Uh, he just went off to UNR. He's in his second day of real classes at University of Nevada, Reno, and they don't have a water polo team. He loved the school. It was okay that they didn't have a water polo team. And so I'm pretty sure I'm done watching my oldest son uh, compete in, in uh, organized sports. And um, I wasn't ready for that. I don't like it, but it happened. Uh, and I need to now focus on just soaking up every last second of the time I get with the other two getting to watch them play. And if we focus on that, if we focus on the fact that this is such a privilege and a joy to be able to do and ignore all the small picture stuff of playing time and, and coach doesn't do this the way I think they should and blah, blah, blah. Uh, don't let them, don't let anything take you out of the game of being able to just simply love every second of this. If you can pull that off, you are going to look back on, um, their youth sports experience, like thankfully I do with my oldest son, which is with no regrets and the just the simple fact that I loved every single second of it and it was an absolute blast. So that's what we want for you. Uh, hopefully we've given you some, some tools and tips to be able to pull that off. Uh, we've got a few uh, resources for you on the way out of here. Uh, most namely, if you want to take a picture of this screen, uh, this, this is a webinar, so you can you can access it later also. But PCADevZone.org, if you want to just snap a shot of this, write that down, whatever. PCADevZone.org is the WebMD for sports. It, that stands for uh, Positive Coaching Alliance Development Zone. Um, PCA Dev Zone has is a resource for your athlete, for your coaches, for the officials, for you. It has a place for everybody. It's a super searchable thing. And if you go and look at our national advisory board, who's behind the PCA movement, you will know every single name. And it is a very impressive group of pro coaches and pro athletes and Olympians that want nothing but the best for you and your child and um, hoping that they can get that message across uh, what this is all about, what this is for, and to absolutely soak up every second of it. So thank you very much for having us, MA Bears. You guys are awesome. And uh, Paul, it's back to you, man. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Cletus, both of you for your time and uh, just the powerful message that you that you share to us each and every year, not just you guys, but the PCA in general. We've been very impressed with our presenters and especially you guys tonight. So thank you. Thank you very much. Mark, on a personal note, I uh, texted my sister-in-law, went to Davis High, and I have no idea, I didn't even ask how old you are, but you guys were in the same graduating class, so if you remember Lisa Hartman, she says hi. <laughs> oh, fabulous. Yeah, she okay. said to say hi. I said, okay, I'll try. <laughs> I'll get on Facebook, we'll, we'll figure it out. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'll, I'll call you and uh, we'll follow up. Perfect. Awesome. Well, we are joined by Steve Krieger, our other AD now. I'm going to have to peel out pretty soon. I am going to do one slide um, and talk about clearance. Um, and then Steve is going to do the next slide and talk about all of our accomplishments. But he's going to share his screen in a second. Um, hopefully, most of you guys have done clearance already. But uh, if you didn't, um, and maybe your wife or husband did, and you you need to do it next year. Maybe you're on on that task next year. It's it's pretty easy. We make it uh, hopefully pretty easy for you guys. Um, the website you can go to one of two. BearsAthletics.com would go to uh, our main athletics website, and then you would just go to more. If you hover over more, it says clearance packet, and then if you scroll down to that a little bit. It'll go to the website, which is Sportsnet, which you see here. Um, so there's more. You can click uh, clearance packet. And then if you, it'll give you some just description of everything, deadlines and stuff. And then if you see the link down there, the first link is 
for Sportsnet. And that's the online clearance system we use. Uh, you only have to do this once a year. So it'd be great if you get in the habit of doing it in the summer. Um, but if you're doing a fall sport like your kids are now, this is due in the end of July. There's a little bit of wiggle room um, and understanding that we give to freshman parents, um, uh, especially new parents that aren't used to this system. But uh, tryouts do start before school starts in the fall, and that's always been that way. So uh, we started, I think, August 4th this year for most sports. Some postponed a little bit. I know tennis got a little bit of a later start, and they kind of started the first week of school. So I think we started the 16th of August, and they started the 14th. But football and a bunch, you know, volleyball, they all started that Friday, uh, August 4th or 5th, whatever that Friday was. Um so yeah, get your clearance packets in every single year. You need to do it once um, and you can choose different sports for the whole year. If they're a multi-sport athlete, you can, you know, just put in those, those uh, sports that they're going to do for the whole year. And uh, the only thing is you have to, the uh, physical lasts one year. So if your physical happens to, you know, expire, your kid's physical expires in the middle of the season, you're going to have to get that appointment right away. Um, and so there's no, you know, time that they're ineligible medically to keep participating. So um, get in touch with your doctors early, get those appointments and get it the day it expires, or you're going to have some lag in that. And it could result in them not playing in games, which is not what we want. So um, the other way to get to athletic clearance is if you're used to mabears.org, our main school website, there's a tab for athletics and you can just go from there. It goes to the same sports net thing, um, but there's a lot of good general information there too. So I do apologize, but I have to get to a boy scout thing when my kid is getting a, a new badge today. So there's a court of honor and I have to scoot to that. He's the MC, so I can't miss it. Um, so from me and Steve being the MC to now my kid being the MC at his thing. So Steve's going to show us what we can be proud of from the last, uh, just the history of athletics at MA, which is quite something to be proud of. All right. Thanks, Paul. Go enjoy your night. Congrats to Trevor. <laughs> thanks. Um, okay. So a little bit about our athletic program for those of you who are not aware and those of you who are newer, um, we are in the Peninsula Athletic League, which are the 17 public high schools in San Mateo County. Um, there is something called the Commissioner's Cup, um, where points are awarded based on which place your varsity team came in within each sport. Uh, there's bonus points uh, for um, sportsmanship, and then you can lose uh, points uh, as well. And you can see that for the last 14 years, we have won the Commissioner's Cup. Um, and I think that speaks to a number of items. Uh, one, we obviously have phenomenal athletes. Um, they do well in the classroom. Uh, they do amazing on the field. Um, we have transformational coaches. Uh, I think you heard a great presentation from PCA. Um, and I think uh, our coaches buy into that philosophy, um, really putting the life skills over winning um, at all costs. Um, and that plays a significant role. Um, we do have great facilities. Um, we are certainly always looking to add on, and there's some things coming up um, from this latest bond that we're looking to do and expanding our training room, our weight room, um, adding some classrooms um, to meet with teams. Um, and so that's certainly something we're looking forward to. Um, and then we have phenomenal support. And I think that, you know, starts with parents. Um, we do have an amazing set of parents that do so much for all of our teams, um, our administration, uh, our custodial staff, our teachers who are so supportive. Um, and then last but certainly not least, our athletic boosters, um, who without them, uh, quite honestly, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, we wouldn't have very much of an athletic program. Uh, for those of you who are interested, I did put a link in the chat um, to a Google Doc. Um, it's a copy of our budget. Um, so those of you who are interested in seeing seeing that, um, I'll put it in one more time. Um, you'll get a sense of how much money we do bring in. Um, and I can tell you that um, more than double that is what we need. And that's where our athletic boosters come into play. 
Um, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Muse for the next few minutes, uh, talk a little bit about communication um, and sportsmanship, because obviously that's an integral part of the success of our athletic program. Mr. Muse. Thanks, Steve. Uh, yeah, I'm Nick Muse. I'm one of the administrative vice principals. This is my fifth year at MA and uh, the first year that I've had the privilege to work really directly with uh, with Steve and Paul. Um, we are really fortunate to have such dedicated and, and capable ADs um, steering a, a very large <laughs> steamship, so to speak, uh, that is MA Athletics. Um, we're really proud of all of the accomplishments that Steve listed. Uh, the Commissioner's Cups in particular, I think, speak to to, to the values, the shared values that we have as a, as a, as a community, as a school, um, and, and um, very, very pleased to, uh, to see that number <laughs> continue to grow, hopefully. Um, I just want to say a few things about some of the expectations we have for coaches and athletes and really everything that that uh, that we heard from from the the great folks at PCA um we see reflected in our own expectations we have coaches who who coach for the for the love of of the sports that they coach uh but particularly for uh, out of out of love for the students um that they that they serve in those capacities um as coaches and and mentors and guides and all things um, we do expect them to to know their sport, of course. <laughs> that always helps, um, and to organize practices so that the time they have together with the students is meaningful and and safe and well structured, um, and and timely. But above all, we we really expect our coaches to to serve as mentors and teach students the the values of good sportsmanship. Um, really, that that students will take away from from their experience uh, playing high school athletics. But really, more than anything that happens on the field um, in terms of results. For the part on the part of the athletes, I'm glad that Mark mentioned the growth mindset. That's something that we really try to embrace as a school and certainly as a as an athletics program. Uh, students who who come into their uh, their experience on our various sports teams with the uh, the a commitment to being better than they were yesterday really uh, enjoy their experiences much more than than those who who come in with a fixed mindset, um, and of course coming into practices and games uh, intending to give as much effort as they can not only to 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 their own growth but to the growth of their of their team communities will certainly help them uh, grow personally and 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 uh, athletically as well. Um, as, as Steve alluded to, we have uh, very high GPAs across all of our sports teams, and so we expect our students to maintain um, not just the minimum standards uh, that will make them eligible to participate, but, but high academic achievement um, above and beyond that as well. Uh, we have lots of resources that we dedicate to our athletes um, in, in the name of, of that goal of, of academic achievement, um, from study hall to uh, availability of, of tutors after school. Um, we have really robust services here. And of course, uh, we expect our students to demonstrate good sportsmanship. Uh, sportsmanship. Um, the a lot of what Mark mentioned is is very hard to maintain. We know the sort of the the silent uh, the silent response to to a bad call is very hard to coach. Certainly, uh, I struggled with that in high school, and and, and you know my, my dad did as well. Um, but it's something that we we try to inculcate in our kids. All right, the next slide, Steve, so if you could. So uh, in terms of, of communication, uh, we do have a protocol, but but at the foundation of, we can go one, oh, okay. Um, got it, thanks, Steve. So I want to um, just talk a little bit about communication protocols, because I think this is where a lot of these values uh, manifest themselves. We certainly want to empower students to self-advocate and to develop communication skills in their work um, on, on teams. And if issues arise, um, we thank you in advance for, for guiding and coaching your, your, uh, your student to speak with the coach in, in a way that, that is honest and productive. Um, if if those conversations require uh, additional facilitation, we, we parents can certainly um, participate in those. Um, and if issues continue to arise, we can involve athletic directors and, and ultimately uh, myself as well, um, should we need to get around the table and really figure things out. Our approach here at MA is uh, restorative, which means that 
we we go into all of these issues with in the spirit of curiosity and trying to uh, come up with student centered solutions that uh, that are also good for the for the team communities. Okay, next slide, please. So uh, to go back to expectations, yeah, my um, apologies. No, no, no worries. Um, we we uh, urge you to uh, to <laughs> to if if at games uh, to uh, try to to embody the spirit of of some of the some of the takeaways that hopefully you got from the PCA's um, presentation. Um, students will remember. Um, things from from their high school experiences and often parents are a huge part of that uh, experience i remember unfortunately one of my main experiences that i recall from high school is, is my dad getting a red card on the sideline in one of my soccer games and he had to watch the game from the parking lot um and um it was uncomfortable and and uh you know so i but i learned a lot from it and and um one of the better experiences i had was the conversation i had with my coach immediately after that uh, talking about about sportsmanship and how i could work on that you know as a family with my dad uh, we got there eventually um and uh again I, I feel like i'm reiterating a lot of the, the the excellent points made by our pca um contributors which were excellent but uh, I, I love the the phrase you know filling the coach's emotional uh, emotional tank um our coaches work incredibly hard and um and and go into their work not at, not out of a sense of ego but with a real real dedication to developing our student athletes um, so please support them in in that effort, and and even if you don't agree with with outcomes or playing time, um, please please support the program uh, by supporting the coaches and their efforts. Um, and we ask you also to just make sure you're following program protocols for expressing concerns or complaints. So um, encourage your your student to to check in with the coach if issues arise, and then just know that there are um, ever increasing levels of of uh, oversight and and involvement that we can go to if if we need to resolve those issues together as a team as a school team, I mean. Um, and, you know, the, one of the great privileges of my work here at MA is, is to go to games. And, and I would say overwhelmingly, our fans are incredibly positive and, um, and supportive. And, uh, you know, really one of the magic, magical elements of this, this school community is our sports uh, program uh, overall. And a lot of that comes um, from parents and, and their positive involvement. So I want to thank you for uh, for many of the wonderful experiences I've had at some of our sporting events, and and thank you in advance for your continued dedication to to your uh, to the students and also to our programs as a whole. Great, thank you, Nick. Um, so you can see a little bit about good sportsmanship, uh, the core values that we have that Nick uh, alluded to, and for all of MA and our pride, having patience, respect, integrity, determination, and empathy. Um, the fall sports that we have going on now here across country, football, girls golf, girls tennis, girls volleyball, and then we have water polo uh, for both boys and girls. Um, and again, if you go back to our MA website, um, you can see all the different winter sports that we have coming up. Um, and they start at the end of October, beginning of November. Um, and then you can see our spring sports and they will start on January 29th. Um, and so you wanna make sure if you uh, haven't had your packet in, um, they, that you get those in in a timely manner about a week to 10 days before those start. Um, and then in general on our website is just about anything that you wanna find in terms of athletics, the schedules, coaches, um, emails. Uh, so if you need to reach out to a coach, um, everything you need, you're gonna find um, right there on that, on that website. Uh, we're very fortunate to have a trainer. Um, the district picks up the cost of that uh, for each of the four schools. Um, we have Steph Mock. She's in her second year. She's hired by Stanford. Um, she is allotted 30 hours a week. Um, we are in some discussions with both Stanford and our district to try to up that. Um, you know, we have close to 60 teams, 1,100 athletes. We have more freshman teams than any other school in our district. Um, and so it really puts a tax on our trainer. Um, and she does a great job. Um, she's at all of, um, certainly all of our contact sports. She's at those games. Um, she'll bounce back and forth. I know she was out at football practice today for a while. Um, our girls volleyball has a match uh, against Menlo at home. 
Um, and I can tell you they won the first set. So um, it's close in the second. If I hear a score, I'll update you. Um, but then she's in the gym with the volleyball and she'll bounce around to all the different facilities. Um, but she does a great job and she'll not only treat um, athletes when they're injured, but she does rehab to help them get back out um, into the playing field or pool or track, whatever it may be. Um, and then she's also in charge of our concussion protocol. And just so you know, um, that's something that is state mandated. Um, and the protocol is um, if you've been, uh, if there's a suspect of a, of a concussion, um, she must send you to a doctor. The doctor will do the evaluation. Um, and if they say that you've had a concussion, then um, after you've had, uh, you've been symptom free for 48 hours, they will start a seven day return to protocol. Um, so um, it does take some time once you've been diagnosed with a concussion, you know, 10 days to two weeks, depending on how your symptoms are. Um, this is out of our control, out of Steph's control. It, it is something that is very specifically mandated by the state in terms of the timing. Um, and I think Steph's uh, mindset is that it's all of ours is student safety first, no matter what. Um, but at the same time, once it is safe, trying to do everything we can to get our athletes back out in the arena. Um, so she does a really great job of that. Um, as I talked about um, earlier, and I put our uh, athletic budget, um, a link to that in the chat, um, you can get a sense of some of the expenses and what our income is and where we spend some of our money. Um, we have uh, a limited amount that we can spend on equipment, so uh, $10,000, um, and that's for balls and shuttlecocks and things of that nature. Um, and so all of our uniforms, all of our assistant coaching stipends, all of our freshmen, on and on and on, and, and I'll let um, our booster president, Janelle McCombs, get into the details of that. Um, but they fund, um, you know, probably half or more of our athletic budget in terms of all of our needs. I um, mean, they do a phenomenal job, but it's not without all of your contributions. So with that, I'm going to turn it over uh, to our booster president, Janelle McCombs. Thank you, Stephen. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Janelle McCombs. I'm the president of Boosters. I'm a huge athletic supporter, athletic fan. Um, wish I could say I was some world-class athlete. That's not the case, but uh, my passion for sports carries me. Um, just a couple little trivia things. Stephen went over some of the basic budget things, but just so you all know, um, MA is the largest school in our district, and we have the largest number of athletes that participate in sports. This year, we have 50% of all enrolled students participating in sports, whether it's at the pool, on a field, on a court. So it's pretty impressive. Um, what you also may or may not know is that MA gets the exact same amount of money from the district as any other school in the district, despite the fact that we're the largest um, and have that many athletes. So it's tricky. So what Steve and Paul and Nick Muse do is amazing in terms of getting all of our athletes engaged in sports. And we all know sports are incredible, not just for the wins and losses, but what for it, it does for them as humans. So it's my job and the board's job to help step in and sort of bridge that ever widening gap that seems to happen every year in terms of what Steve and Paul are given to work with and what we need to run the athletic department. So what do we do? Boosters basically fundraises. And we do that via two basic mechanisms. Our first one is through the sale of our bearware. So if you're on campus or at an event and you see an MA sweatshirt or a t-shirt or a hat, that's boosters. So come get your swag. Um, we sell at all football games, at basketball games. We have an online site as well. So go to the main webpage and under athletics, you will find boosters and you will be able to place an order there. So I really encourage you to get your spirit on and order your bear wear. Um, and then secondly is really what I'm here for tonight is to sort of do my plea for the parent and communal support that we desperately need um, from you all. We can't do this without tapping into you. And believe me, I wish that there was a scenario in which we didn't have to ask any family for any additional funds. And my goal is one day that we're gonna get there, but we're not there yet. So we continue to sort of work with our community. Um, what we basically ask is that for every athlete at MA, you contribute $250 per team per student athlete. And that money goes towards 
all assistant coaches. It goes towards base uniforms and it goes to equipment. And those are three pretty key items. And without them, we don't have an athletics department. Um, we can't do it just with what the district gives our school. So we fundraise. So we really, 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 really encourage you um, to help support the 59 teams that we have out there. Um, m-aboosters.com. We do stock. We do corporate matches. We do anything that you possibly would consider. Um, and again, it's my goal not to have to reach out to you, but until we are there, this is what we, what we have to do. So I implore you that if we all come together as a community, we can do this and we can get even more athletes out there. Right now, we're doing a little special promo. Thank you, Steve, for putting that up there on the screen. Um, again, our ask is 250, but for the special promo, we're asking that for any family that donates 300 or more, you get this special MA Bears um, Athletic Boosters tote bag. tote bag. It's not something that we're going to sell. It's only for donors, and it's nice to see them out around campus at the various games. So if you were to consider donating, you might want to do it now while we still have some bags and while we have this promo. And again, it's 300 or more, um, if possible. And I get it. That's a lot. But in order for us to get those athletes out there, we just need your help. So appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you all around campus. Don't hesitate to reach out with any questions you have of us and happy to answer as best we can and uh, just go Bears. Thanks, Steve. Thank you very much, Janelle. Um, you know, just to wrap this up, I appreciate everybody taking their time. Um, I've been here for 15 years. Um, I think we have an amazing uh, school community. Um, there's so many things that are offered, whether it's athletics, drama, the music department, um, academically, we're obviously one of the best schools around. Um, and it's just, it's an amazing place to be. Um, and our athletic program obviously is a big part of that. It's a big part of where the community comes together. Um, I know um, I can hear in the other room, um, my family's watching the volleyball game on the NFHS camera and I can hear the crowd, it's so loud. There's, so there's a huge crowd in the volleyball, we get huge, huge crowds at uh, all of our sporting events. It's an exciting place to be. Um, so we encourage you to come out, go on our website, find out when other games are. Um, and again, none of this happens without your support. So we really do appreciate it. Um, our athletic program, I think, is transformational for many of our kids. Um, there are so many of our kids that, if not for athletics, they may not be very interested in coming to school. And that's, I think that's a... Uh, an unfortunate reality to some extent, um, but it is, and our athletic program really keeps them going. Um, lots of support. Uh, there are programs that we have that help to clothe and feed some of our athletes, um, the tutoring program that's going on. Um, so there's so much that goes on beyond what's in the field of play, um, and it takes a village. It takes a, a, a huge village, and so um, appreciate, um, again, your support. Appreciate everybody taking the time. Uh, thanks very much. Look forward to seeing you at an event and go Bears.